surveillance of Muslim member members of parliament advocated for by the vice president of the Greek parliament. A Muslim member of the Greek parliament now faces a threat of thorough surveillance for national security reasons. New democracy deputy parliament speaker MP, I don't know how to pronounce anything in Greek names, so I'm sorry. Um, MP Charlambos Anthon CEO said, if a Muslim MP might give information to Turkey from where migrants can enter the country, why should he not be checked and surveilled? Here, national security takes precedence. The uproar happened at a time when the relationship between Turkey and Greece has soured. The illegal crossing of refugees has caused many worries for the Greeks, and many believe Turkey has Turkey uses this as leverage. As an additional backdrop, a vast political out, uh, political scandal resulted as a result of the Greek National Intelligence Agency tapping the phone and other communications of opposition leader Nikos uh, Andrulakis when he was running for the party leader of the uh, Pasok Kinal party. The left-wing uh, Syriza Progressive Alliance has demanded the dismissal of Athanasiou for the quote-unquote unacceptable statements. Syriza stated in a statement, said in a statement, Mr. Athanasiou ought to know that national security relates to the intervention of a third country in Greece's domestic politics or involvement in criminal activity. They added, it does not relate to and may not relate to the religion of Greek citizens or deputies. Essentially, Mr. Anathansiou states that whoever is not Christian Orthodox is a national threat. So wow. this is pretty wild. So there's like a larger backdrop here. So kind of one of the important backdrops is basically it's been revealed that there have been political party members that were being spied on by basically the Greek equivalent of like the FBI or CIA with potentially like the Israeli Pegasus spyware technology. So that's a huge scandal. And this guy who's the VP of the Greek parliament was being asked about this. And basically he gave a hypothetical example in which he is endorsing this and legitimizing it on the basis of that if there are Muslim MPs, they might feel more, Basically, he's basically treating them like a fifth column. Like they have a more of an alignment with Turkey because they're Muslim and they're going to betray us in our Greek Orthodox values. And they're going to be giving information to Turkey, who we have really tense relationship with right now. And because of a greater religious affiliation. And if that's the case, then it is totally legitimate for us to surveil them on that basis alone. Kind of like how Jewish politicians are treated as if they're a fifth column for Israel. It's similar to that. And like, like Jewish Americans are sometimes treated as if they're loyal more to Israel than the United States, even though their citizenship is American. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> Trump famously at a um, speech to Jewish Americans told them your prime minister referring to Netanyahu to American oh, no. Jews to American Jews he was referring to as your prime minister like what are you talking to them? these are Americans <laughs> oh, oh no God, I remember that. <laughs> that was such an embarrassment I'm so bad it's so, it's, oh, so no. it, it's it's also because it's like a a Jewish like trope, like it's an anti-Semitic trope that like they're like, oh, they'll have loyalty more to Israel or something. Yeah. But I think this is something yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. We I <laughs> wanted to find his full quote because the full quote is pretty crazy. Let us suppose that an MP has a religious orientation different than that of the Orthodox people, a Muslim MP from Northern Greece, for example. This is not a barb, God forbid. If we take the example that he might give some information to our neighboring country, referring to Turkey, from where migrants will enter the country and so forth, why should he not be surveilled? Here, national security takes precedence. And he tried to cite a provision in the Constitution that states a law determines 
the guarantees under which the judicial authority is not bound for reasons of national security and the laws protecting the confidentiality of communications. It's so wild. And it's so, so wild. people have come forth and basically condemned him for implying that like Greek Muslims are not really Greek, that they can't be trusted. It's such an anti Greek thing. Like you're basically devaluing your citizenship. Like it's such a self own. You're attacking the value of what it means to be a citizen of your country. Basically, you're creating two tier citizenship. You know, second class, mm -hmm. first class citizens, like Greek, Greek people, real Greek people, and not, you know, and maybe like citizens, that, even if you're a politician. You're not really Greek, are you? That's what they're saying. So basically a two-tier citizenship. When you create, a, when you promote an idea that there's a two tiers to your citizenship, you're basically devaluing, you know, your citizenship, which is an attack on the country as a whole. Attack mm -hmm. of what makes being Greek valuable. So it's such a self own You're attacking, Greek, you know, the, the structure, the, fund, the foundations, and the legal structure that the entire country that is built upon and threatening that to its very core. That's why it's so important to attack such nonsense. Yeah. It's also yeah. shocking, like how widespread these attitudes are. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of this has to do with like the geopolitical turmoil between Turkey and Greece, which I've been meaning to catch up on because things are getting spicy over there. But, um, Oh yeah. 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 I don't um, Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.